This is the EYT Media Network. And good evening, folks, and welcome to Carn City High School tonight. It is uh, PIAA playoff action coming your way, boys double A tonight. It's the champion out of District 5, Connemont Township, taking on Carn City this evening. As I said, from Carn City High School, it should be a good one on hand this evening as we can get into the Carly Tire pregame show. Well, Bob, last night a tough loss for the Keystone girls against Winbur, a hard-fought uh, game, but uh, came up a little bit short. Tonight we continue uh, with uh, the state playoffs with uh, Connemont Township here in Carn City. So it just keeps going, and of course uh, we'll see Clarion coming up on Friday night. That's another one. Uh, that we'll have for you this week. So we continue to be busy, and we keep rooting for these KSAC teams to continue to do well. Yeah, seven games, nine days. Been a fun run for us. The unfortunate thing is, of course, we know someone has to go home a loser. Uh, but just because you lose the ball game doesn't mean you didn't have a positive season. And, of course, uh, I'm referring to, you know, obviously, Keystone girls coming up short in that one. Had a great season. Look, your district champs. Not a whole lot of teams get to say that, so be proud of the success you had and obviously the friendship and memories that you made. But the game at hand tonight, Michael, involves two top boys squads here. And, of course, uh, we've talked about it quite a bit during the course of the regular season, during the course of the district playoffs. But, you know, it's just such an unusual situation to have a team go in their first game outside the districts be against another number one opponent unless you came through that loser's bracket. But there is no loser's bracket. So. Nope. Uh, you're going to start off against top-notch talent. There is no easy game. There's no game to look past. And, you know, ultimately you have to come out, put the numbers up each and every week. And you're not going to get easy games from here on out. So there is no such thing as, easy, as an easy game with this format. So it should be very entertaining tonight. All right, we'll take a first time out. We're going to come back. We'll have uh, players to watch in the ball game. talk about the governor's keys. And we'll get you set up for this one. Take about a three-minute break. And I uh, also want to thank tonight the Haskell House and Clarion helping us provide the uh, broadcast this evening uh, is uh, powered by the Haskell House tonight. So we do want to thank them for that. And again, it is Laurel Eye Clinic uh, State Playoff Basketball Action. We're at Carn City. It's uh, Connemont Township here at Carn City. It's live on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. Located at 511 Main Street in Shippenville, All-American Awards and Engraving is expanding to provide even better customer service with that personal small-town feel. Father, Jim Carroll, and son, Ian, are now the co-owners of the newly expanded 5,500-square-foot facility that is now open and ready for business. From embroidery to engraving to screen printing to personalized gifts, All American Awards and Engraving is ready to help you. Make your organization, business, school team, or event stand out with All American Awards and Engraving's quality promotional products. Visit their showroom for apparel, trophy, and awards ideas at 511 Main Street or visit their website at allamericanhq.com. Sweet Basil Italian Restaurant and Bar in Shippenville offers daily specials for dine-in or takeout. Burger Sunday, Ravioli Monday, Lasagna Tuesday, Wings on Wednesday, Pasta Night Thursday, Fish Friday, and Prime Rib Saturday. In addition to the popular specials, there's a wide variety of pasta, pizzas, sandwiches, salads, appetizers, and homemade desserts. There's an option on the menu for every member of the family. Sweet Basil crafts their own bread, dough, sauces and pies to give an authentic Italian cuisine and a one-of-a-kind experience. Sweet Basil, located off of Exit 60 of I-80 on Paint Boulevard, strives to invest in the local economy by supporting local farmers and using and promoting their products. To view their menu, visit Sweet Basil Italian Restaurant and Bar on Facebook. Call 814-226-7013 to place your takeout. Owners and operators, if your business depends on your truck, then we've got you covered. From simple oil changes to complete engine rebuilds, Bauer Truck Repair has the tools and the know-how to get the job done. We also offer 24-hour roadside assistance. Anywhere, anytime, any weather. Our techs are ready to get your truck fixed and back on the road. We even offer towing and load transfer services. At Bauer Truck Repair, we understand that every minute and every dollar counts. So trust your business with our business. Bauer Truck Repair, located off exit 60 in Chippenville. You can also find 
find us online at BauerTruckRepair.com or call us at 814-226-6023. That's 814-226-6023. Dubrook, a proud member of the M&B Group, is the right choice for your next concrete project. Specializing in decorative concrete products, precast concrete products, Gravel and stone delivery. Dubrook has what you need to complete your residential or commercial project. With locations in Clarion, Dubois, St. Mary's, Butler, and Evans City, Dubrook is ready to offer their professional help as your ready mix supplier. Call 1 844 Dubrook today. This is Corey. He made two big mistakes. His first mistake was not going to Laurel Eye Clinic to have bladeless LASIK. His second mistake was trying to pet what he thought was his cat without wearing his glasses. Don't be like Corey. Call Laurel Eye Clinic. This is the EYT Media Network. And back here at Carn City High School, Mike Kalinowski, Governor Bob Dunkel, Dustin Kiefer, all here with you here this evening. It is the District 5 champion, Connemaw Township. The Indians come in with an overall record of 14-5. Chris Bellis' Carn City Gremlins at 22 and 2 overall, the champions out of District 9. We're in the Carly Tire pregame show, getting set for this one and taking a look at the Luton's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning players to watch. And of course, very familiar with Carn City, but this Connemaw Township team, Bob, has a couple guys uh, in double digits. One uh, with a pretty good uh, scoring average of 21.6. We'll talk about him. And uh, they're kind of stacked. It's a pretty good basketball team. Well, they are. There's a lot of talent out there, Mike. The guy you're talking about is Tyler Poznanski. 21.6 points per game. He's 6-1, and he's got a pretty good vertical, as we have noticed during the course of warm-ups. Jackson Byer contributing 14.5 per game, and Cameron Stump at 8.8. Tanner Shirley, 8.2. So it's a well-rounded bunch, and, of course, what that tells you is generally as a rule, they're supporting players. They can step up if given the opportunity. So you got to play the honest out there on the defensive side. For Carn City, we are very familiar with them. Of course, Chase Bailey leads the way. He's the all-time leading scorer here at Carn City. 19.1 points per ball game. Nathan Waltman checking in with 16. Luke Kramer at 10.1 and Micah Roop 6.8. Now, those guys on any given night, you know, throughout the season, and uh, maybe we're his good luck charm, but we've had the opportunity to see this team a number of times, and Luke Kramer seems to always have a big game. I know he's a player that uh, you've talked about in the past you really like. He's a little old school. He does things very fundamentally sound. Certainly a lot of fun to watch, but all these guys are going to have to have a, a strong game tonight if Carn City wants to come away a winner. All right, again, those players to watch are brought to you by Luton's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. And we'll take one more time out. You want to let you know, too, the playoffs in the state here powered by the Haskell House. Want to thank them for that sponsorship. And we're going to take a time out here on the Carly Tire pregame show. Coming back, Governor's Keys to the game. We'll talk about those and more. And you're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic uh, State Playoff Basketball. It's live on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. <laughs> say thanks. Thanks, of course, to our customers. After all, you're the reason we're here and your support means everything to us. But as we all face the disruptions of this unprecedented time, we owe special appreciation to our community's first responders, medical professionals, and caregivers. In today's battle for the health of our families and neighbors, we're in your debt for your heroism, generosity, and caring. Thank you. One of the biggest risks to your future could be running out of money during a longer than expected retirement. Many people have not yet taken the time to determine if they will have enough assets to last throughout retirement. Our Retirement Income Evaluator can help you develop a roadmap and actual recommendations. To learn more, stop by our office located at 162 South 2nd Avenue in Clarion. Give us a call at 2223-9990 or visit JennyClarion.com. Jenny Montgomery Scott, LLC, member NYSE, FINRA, and SIPC. Homeowners and do-it-yourselfers, right now is a great time to redo your kitchen into a space you'll love. At Kale's Factory Direct Kitchens, we'll help you design and build a beautiful custom-built hardwood kitchen that will last, and you'll save money. How? 
At Kales, there are never middleman markups, hidden charges, or sales commissions that can add 40%. Don't overpay for your kitchen cabinets at big box stores. Get them direct from Kales Factory Direct. Located at 511 Main Street in Shippenville, All-American Awards and Engraving is expanding to provide even better customer service with that personal small town feel. Father, Jim Carroll, and son, Ian, are now the co-owners of the newly expanded 5,500 square foot facility that is now open and ready for business. From embroidery to engraving to screen printing to personalized gifts, All American Awards and Engraving is ready to help you. Make your organization, business, school team, or event stand out with All American Awards and Engraving's quality promotional products. Visit their showroom for apparel, trophy, and awards ideas at 511 Main Street or visit their website at allamericanhq.com. Right back here at uh, Carn City High School. District 5, District 9 doing battle here in the boys' double-A state playoffs. As we get set tonight, we're in the Carly Tire pregame show, and we've already talked about some of the players to watch in this one. And time to turn our attention to the Gatesman's Auto Body Governor's Keys to the Game. And, Bob, when you look at this one, of course, uh, folks know we're very familiar with Carn City, but... Uh, this uh, Connemaw Township team coming in certainly has some firepower. What do you think each team needs to do to come out here with a win? Well, I think Connemaw Township has to have success from three-point land. I'm not so sure that really that's the type of ball game they want to play, but obviously the scouting, the MO is there. You're going to have some success with that because what will happen is basically Coach Bellis has a philosophy, I think, that, you know what, I'm going to let you have those in the first half. We'll make adjustments in the second half. We're also going to come up and get in your face and try and eliminate that now. That being said, again, it's a lot easier said than done. You're coming in a gym you're not familiar with. You, you've got to try and connect on those. Each gym, as you know, has a little bit of a sweet spot as far as the rims go. It can be a challenge. I think for them it's important, too, to play physical. Try and get this gremlin squad in a little bit of foul trouble. Uh, you know, and if you do get a lead, the one thing you have to remember is keep on pouring it on. Obviously, you know, we look back to Saturday's game. County had that nine-point lead. And I think at one point might have made 11, but yep. it's nine-point yep. lead at, at halftime. So... That's that magic three possession or less uh, lead. Now, the reality is if you're able to, to just continue to add to that or maintain it, you're going to be in great shape. But you have to keep on pouring on. You can't go to cruise mode and decide to stall. Now, if we take a look at current city, again, it, it's real simple. Whoever is open, feed them the ball. And, and that's the beauty of this offense. You know, just as easily tonight could be Chase Bailey leading the way with scoring rather than Nathan Waltman. If the opportunity presents itself, Bailey will. If it doesn't. One of the other guys, Luke Kramer, has the ability to step up these guys. But I think the whole key is get in the paint. And by getting in the paint, you're going to challenge this Connemaw squad to come up and play defense. You might be able to get them into some foul trouble. Uh, looks like they may not have a ton of depth on their roster. Again, a little hard for us to gauge that, but just based on the numbers we're seeing through, put up throughout the season. Now, that can also be misleading, but you got to understand, of course, we're doing the best we can homework-wise and checking all the facts available to us. But... There's a big reason why we continue to play these games and don't make assumptions based on numbers. Well, there you go. Governor's Keys to the Game brought to you again by um, Gatesman's Auto Body. Let's take one more quick timeout. Let's pause a couple. We're going to come back, wrap up the Carly Tire pregame show coming up. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic, state playoff basketball powered by the Hasco House. It's all here on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. Owners and operators, if your business depends on your truck, then we've got you covered. From simple oil changes to complete engine rebuilds, Bauer Truck Repair has the tools and the know-how to get the job done. We also offer 24-hour roadside assistance anywhere, anytime, any weather. Our techs are ready to get your truck fixed and back on the road. We even offer towing and load transfer services. At Bauer Truck Repair, we understand that every minute and every dollar counts. So trust your business with our business. Bauer Truck Repair, located off Exit 60 in Chippenville. You can also find Find us online at BauerTruckRepair.com or call us at 814-226-6023. That's 814-226-6023. This is Corey. He made two big mistakes. His first mistake was not going to Laurel Eye Clinic to have bladeless LASIK. His second mistake was trying to pet what he thought was his cat without wearing his glasses. Don't be like Corey. Call Laurel Eye Clinic. 
Dubrook, a proud member of the M&B Group, is the right choice for your next concrete project. Specializing in decorative concrete products, precast concrete products, gravel and stone delivery, Dubrook has what you need to complete your residential or commercial project. With locations in Clarion, Dubois, St. Mary's, Butler, and Evans City, Dubrook is ready to offer their professional help as your ready mix supplier. Call 1 844 Dubrook today. All right, rocking and rolling back here at Carn City High School. It is uh, the boys' state double-A playoffs tonight as Carn City welcomes in the Connemaw Township uh, Indians. Mike Kalinowski along with the Governor Bob Dunkel, Dustin Kiefer all here tonight. And we're getting set now for the Jane Montgomery Scott starting lineups. We'll have our anthem coming up and the MV Property Care tip-off. Would have been cool tonight. They have a fantastic young lady that sings down here. Maybe a little duet with Bonnie. That would have been good tonight, too. Yeah, no question about that. Uh, two very talented individuals. Well, we're going to get set. We're going to set it down to Sam Swift. Your paid admission to this event entitles you to enjoy an exhibition of skills developed by students in an educational setting. <clears throat> by meeting the challenge of sportsmanship in the stands, you are providing a sound example for students, as well as representing your community and school with dignity and pride. Booing, taunting, or intimidating officials and opponents is unacceptable behavior. Please give the student athlete participants your positive encouragement and support. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with all who are able, please rise and honor America. As a senior, Madison Ike here at Carnes City Area High School sings our national anthem. Would you please remove your hats? Thank you. Oh, say can you see? Again, brought to you by Janet Montgomery Scott. Do want to thank uh, Sam Swick as always, the legendary Sam Swick. Just about ready to go. Final minute on the clock. The teams make their way to their sideline. 
You know, one of the big keys, we already went over the keys, Mike, but one of the big keys, and this really has to happen with both these teams, they cannot go through long periods of offensive droughts. And that's been a telltale sign uh, throughout the years. You go through this, this three to five minute periods without scoring, usually it does not bode very well for you at the end of the ball game. So the teams come on to the courts, just about ready to go. Starting lineups again, Smolin, Shirley, Pazanski, Beyer, and Stump. For Chris Bellis's Gremlin, Sherwin, Roop, Bailey, Kramer, and Waltman. And we're just about ready to go. Roop going nose-to-nose -nose with Beyer, and we're at the center circle. We're ready to go here. And the ball tipped and going to go out of bounds, and it will go into the direction of Carn City. <clears throat> Ball comes into Bailey. Carn City controls just underway. It's a Kale's Kitchen's first quarter. Glad you could be with us tonight here on the EYT Media Network. Explore Clarion, Explorer Jefferson, PA, Explorer Vidango, D9Sports.com. Ball dumped down into Waldman. Waldman at the bottom block. Back up top it goes to Kramer. Kramer finds Sherwin. Here's Sherwin. Hands it off to Bailey. Carn City very taking their time here. Kramer tried to find a seam on the left side. Can't find it. Picked up there by Stump defensively. Ball to the corner to Bailey. Bailey looks in. Everybody's covered. It's going to spin that into Waltman. The ball loose on the court. Fight for the basketball. And what's the call? We're going to Has call. Has to be a travel. Yep, we're going to call the travel. Waltman got on top of the ball and kind of rolled. Was waiting. It took a lot of time off there. A lot of patience. But no shot opened up. Good defense there by Conor Township. Ball to the right side. Buyer with it. Bounce pass. Over to Stump. Back to Buyer. Buyer down the right side. Stump up top of the key. Passes that off to Buyer. Buyer finds a Shirley. And now up top to Smolin. Back to the right side to Stump. Stump into the paint to Shirley. His shot no good. Fight for the basketball. Ripped away by Roop. And we're going to have a foul called. A great job there by that defense. That man-to-man -man defense not allowing anyone to get open. And the result is a foul. Grimlin is looking to take advantage of it. Still no score in this one here at the 648 mark. So uh, Bailey will work it slowly across the timeline. Here we go. Picks up a pick from Waltman down to the corner. Picks up that dribble. Hands it off to Waltman. Hands it back to Bailey. Bailey comes top of the key. And a man defense here by Connemaw Township. The Indians, the District 5 champion. Here's uh, Kramer. Shot from the free throw line. Doesn't go. Got his own rebound, but comes to the ground. It'll be a travel. Great hustle by Kramer. Just kind of lost his footing. Yeah, lost the footing there for a little slick. Still no score in this one, partner. Yep, just underway here. This kills Kitchens first. Buyer works it across the timeline. Finds Stump. Stump into Pazanski. Pazanski shot good. He's the leading scorer on the team with 21.6 game average, and he's got the first two. Yes, saw a little bit of daylight, took advantage of it, made the decision quickly. Gets the shot to fall. Bailey to Waldman. Waldman works it right side, top of the key to Roop on the left side. Now hands it to Kramer. Kramer near the center circle. Here's uh, Kramer, takes a couple dribbles. Ball to the right side to Waldman, down to the corner to Bailey. Bailey has it knocked away, but we're going to get the foul called. Rung up here on Bayer, a little bit of a reach. It'll be the second here against the Indians. Fire, I think, hoping to manufacture a turnover. Made just a little bit too much contact. Ball inbounded to Bailey. Back to the corner. He goes to Sherwin. Back up top to Bailey. 2 nothing as Connemont Township leads here in this one. Just about two and a half minutes gone in this game. Off top to Bailey, left side to uh, Kramer. Kramer driving to the baseline. Kramer picks up that dribble. Takes it back to Waltman. Waltman to the right side, Sherwin. Three-pointer on the way. It's off the mark, no good. It goes off of Roop, and it's turned over to Connemont Township. Checking into the ball game will be Ethan Black here for Connemont Township. You have to really credit that defense out there, Connemont Township spreading it out. And they're playing a man as well, Mike. You're going to see this point in the tournament, you'll see a lot of man <coughs> defenses out there. Ball comes to the left side. Controlled up top by Stump. Bounce pass to uh, Pazanski. Of course, Bob knows anyone with ski at the end of their names. All right, my book. Ball left side. Spinning around. That's Black. Black 
The right elbow kicks it back up top to Stump. Stump lost the basketball. That ball loose. Waltman's going to fall on top of it. Waltman looking for somewhere to go. Got it to Roop and then to Kramer. Here's Kramer down the left sideline. Lost the basketball again. That ball is loose. Picked up by uh, Smolin. Smolin kicks that ball ahead to Shirley. Then on the way to uh, Pazanski. Smolin left side. Stump three-pointer. It is in and out. No good. Rebound pulled down by Roop. It's still 2-0. Connemont Township. 4.27 to go. Bailey almost lost the basketball. Gets it back. He's looking for a little help. Currency just has not had a good look here offensively, Mike. Got to credit this Connemont Township defense being very stingy. Waltman, all alone at the top of the key, now picked up by Stump. He's going to drive down the right side of the lane, falls to the ground, and that, he's going to travel. That floor is really something slick. There is. is there's something in that area. You know, multiple players having issues, so it's not a case of one guy's shoes. Bozanski works it across the timeline. 2 nothing. the Indians lead. Just one field goal so far, and it was by Pazanski. Ball to the right side. Pazanski dumps that down into the paint to Black. Black puts up the shot on the baseline. That's no good. Fight for the basketball. Tipped out of bounds. It'll be tipped out of bounds by Shirley, and it goes to Carn City. Yeah, I talked about long offensive droughts. Carn City in a very long one here, Mike. We're down to 345. They have yet to score in this ballgame. Pressure put on here by Connemont Township. Black right up there on Bailey, but Bailey's going to get through the two defenders. They're going to get Black hitting one of the hands there of Bailey. That'll be the third foul here against the Indians. Bailey takes the inbound. Still 2-0. Three and a half to go here in this Kale's Kitchens first. Kramer to the left side, top of the key. Back to Bailey at the center circle. To the right side to Sherwin. Back to Bailey it goes. Bailey fakes, drives into the lane. Bailey dumps it to Roop. Roop back up top to Sherwin. Ball tipped away, but Sherwin gets it back. Now to the left side to uh, Kramer. Here's Kramer. Cross court comes way up top to Bailey. Finds him. Kind of a dangerous pass there, but finds Bailey. Able to get away with that. That's what happens when you've got a couple of guys used to each other. Shot there by Bailey will fall. Ties the score here at two, and that comes at the 3-0-3 mark. The first field goal for Kern City. Just two, one on each side. Ball to stump. That may very well be the toughest bucket to hit all night, that first one. Kazanski tried to drive, does on the baseline, gets around the defender, puts it up. It's blocked by Roop from behind. The ball loose, hot comes Kramer. Here's Kramer with it. Boy, good job by Roop to get that block. Here's the ball to Waltman. Waltman in the lane. Waltman kicks that ball. It's tipped, but back into the hands of Bailey. Bailey spins around. He'll take the shot from the baseline. That's no good. Rebound pulled down by Roop. Roop back to Kramer. Kramer with the basketball. Kramer driving. Kramer takes that one-hand shot, rolls around. It goes, and it's 4-2 Carn City. Nice effort. That's a second, third opportunity bucket, if you will, by Carn City. They're up here 4-2. Shirley brings it slowly across the timeline, looks to the right side, spins around, finds Stump. Stump takes a dribble. Now to Black. Black right in front of the Carn City bench. Driving is Black, takes the shot on the baseline. That's no good. Fight for the ball. Roop's going to come up with it. Roop dumps that ball ahead to Waldman. Waldman back to Bailey, and here come the Gremlins. Minute 50 to go here in the first quarter. 4-2 Carn City. Kramer driving. Kramer's going to be fouled. It goes, and Kramer up to the line for the old-time three-point play. Huge shot there out of Luke Kramer. You knew physical contact was going to happen. That's yeah, a tough call if you're out there, obviously, in a Connemaw Township fan, but it's the correct call as they will ring this one up on Stump. That'll be his first. That's the team's fourth here at the 143 mark opening quarter of play right now. It's a 6-2 Gremlin lead. Make it seven with that one. Good shots, money in the bank. Luke Kramer now, five points. Smolin with it uh, for the Indians now into the front court of Connemont Township. Minute and a half to go on the clock as the clock rolls down to 130. 7-2 Gremlins. Black up top to Stump. Stump with it right side top of the key. Into the paint to Pazanski, but it's stolen away. Tate Bailey with it. Here's Tate Bailey. To Chase. Chase, three-pointer on the way, and that's off the mark. Fight for the ball. Saved by Kramer, but into the hands of Smolin. And then it is Stump with the basketball driving, and the charge is going to be called on Stump. 
Mike, you drop the shoulder, you know exactly what's going to happen, partner. You will have that call made every day. You know, the intent here is it's about player safety. Gearing into the ball game now. So Carton City, Mike, is in a great position. They're up by five here, but more importantly, there have been five team fouls committed by Connemaw Township here in the first quarter play. Here's a Tate Bailey driving to the hoop shot. Not there, but Gehring's there for the putback, and it's 9-2, Carn City. Gremlins starting to pull away here. They're up by seven. Biggest lead of the ball game, 54 seconds. Kazanski finds Black left side, top of the key. Now to Smolin. Smolin right side to Shirley. Shirley drives into the lane. Shirley puts up the shot. He'll be fouled. Tate Bailey will get called for the foul. That's the first against the Gremlins, and up to the line goes Shirley to shoot a couple. Shirley looking for the first points in the ballgame. Poznanski has the only field goal out there for Connemaw Township. 38 ticks on the clock here. Great to have you with us tonight. Shot is up and off the mark. No good. Well, Mike, the good thing about these 6 o'clock times, and of course since we've sent the clock back, you're safe to drive now because... Back. You yeah, said you're sad. Well, set it back to normal, I should it's say. It's not normal. Daylight saving. They, they, it's not so, normal. So now it's going to be daylight for yeah. you to drive home, so you'll be fine. Yeah. Shot is in. Nine Those three. of you who don't know, Mike just loves when we change the clocks. Here's Kramer across the timeline. Hands it off to Tate Bailey. 30 seconds to go here in the quarter. Kramer on the left side. Back up top to Tate Bailey. Now Chase Bailey with it, into Waltman at the right elbow. Waltman holding the basketball. Down to the right corner to Gehring, and back up top it goes to Tate Bailey. Not a bad 15. thing here to eat this time off the clock. Waltman finds Chase Bailey, back into Waltman. Waltman, big dribble, puts up the shot. Good, it's 11-3, Carn City, seven seconds. Here comes uh, come the Indians here for the last shot. Kaznanski with the shot, it's, he's fouled. He's going to get three at the line. They're going to get Gehring with the foul. And uh, Kaznanski... We'll get to go up there with .6 seconds to go in the quarter. And yeah, contact made. Everybody making sure that this is a three-shot foul. Poznanski has got two. In and out. No good. We've seen a lot more of this in the playoffs, the, the three shots. Well, and, you know, and they're the, certainly the correct calls. Shot's yep. good there. <clears throat> it's one more attempt here. Shin shot is off the mark. Rebound Waltman. We go to quarter number two. Carn City leads 11 4. And we'll take a timeout. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic State Playoff Basketball powered by the Haskell House here on Explore Clarion D9Sports.com. Sweet Basil Italian Restaurant and Bar in Shippenville offers daily specials for dine in or takeout. Burger Sunday, Ravioli Monday, Lasagna Tuesday, Wings on Wednesday, Pasta Night Thursday, Fish Friday, and Prime Rib Saturday. In addition to the popular specials, there's a wide variety of pasta, pizzas, sandwiches, salads, appetizers, and homemade desserts. There's an option on the menu for every member of the family. Sweet Basil crafts their own bread, dough, sauces, and pies to give an authentic Italian cuisine and a one-of-a-kind experience. Sweet Basil, located off of Exit 60 of I-80 on Paint Boulevard, strives to invest in the local economy by supporting local farmers and using and promoting their products. To view their menu, visit Sweet Basil Italian Restaurant and Bar on Facebook. Call 814-226-7013 to place your takeout. All right, back here at Carn City High School. We go to quarter number two. It is a next step therapy second quarter. Carn City leads 11-4, and the Indians will get the basketball to start uh, this uh, second stanza. Stats jump out of me a lot, partner. And Fouls called on Tate Bailey with a hold on the inbound. That'll be his second. The stat I wanted to get to, two-point field goals. Carn City, five of those. Compared to just one for Connemaw. Ball comes in quickly to Shirley. Shirley works the ball to the right side. Over there is Beyer. Beyer back to Stump. Right underneath, wide open was Beyer. His shot is up. It is good. Good look that from up top from Stump. And it's 11 6 as Connemaw Township cuts the lead to five. Yeah, Beyer, first bucket in the ball game. 
Ball right side to Kramer. Bailey and Bailey play a little bit of catch. Bailey fake steps back. He gets the three-point shot on the way. That's no good. Rebound. Kramer puts it right back up and good. He snuck around, had great position. It's 13-6. How about this, Luke Kramer? Seven points to lead all Gremlins in scoring. Talked about in the pregame, you know, this squad has the ability to, on any given night for a guy to step up and lead the team in scoring. Shot taken. It's off the mark. The ball back into the hands of Pizdansny, and it is off the mark, too, as uh, Roop will get the rebound. Here comes uh, Bailey. Bailey with it. Has that ball blocked back, back to Roop. Roop shot. No good. There's Gehring. Gehring brings it down. Kicks it up top. Tate Bailey fakes. Drives. Now kicks it out to Kramer. Kramer shot on the right side. That's no good. Goes over top of the bank board. That's a turnover. I love the sequence. No points out of it, but love the sequence there. Gremlins lead by seven. You have to wonder, too. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at Connemaw, Mike. It's right now they're playing a pretty physical ball game. You have to wonder, will fatigue start to kick in? Ball into Stump, and he's going to put up the shot. Roop tried to block from behind, but Stump, good move, and it's 13-8. Stump now two points as well for him. Ball to Tate Bailey. Gets it across the half-court line here. Lead is five for Carn City. Two-possession ball game with 6.15 to go here in the second. Roop to Bailey. Bower Tate. and Waltman waiting to check in. The next opportunity. Kramer now comes top of the key. Gives it back out to Bailey. Carn City very content here. Just working the ball. Now an open shot for Kramer. That shot no good. Rebound going to be pulled down by uh, Poznanski. Quickly down, Byer uh, takes the shot, and it's off the mark. No good. Rebound pulled down by Roop. Roop kicks that ball ahead to Kramer. Kramer likes to go. Here's Kramer. He stops, pops the shot. It is good by Kramer, and it's 15-8, Carn City. The scouting report was a little deceptive that Connemaw had. Uh, they're giving Kramer real estate, and they have to make some adjustments here. Mike, as he has had a strong night, he's got nine points in this one. Ball to the right Almost side. reminiscent of his performance against Clarion Area, yeah. if you remember that yeah, night. Yeah, you're right. Ball inside, big move by Byer. Gets the basket, and it's 15-10. Good move on that bottom block. Byer now up to four points. Root back to Tate Bailey. He'll work it here. Timeout will be taken. Quick 30-second timeout. We'll break as well. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic State Playoff Basketball on Explore Clarion D9 Sports Talk. Way back to action we go. Time out taken by the Gremlins. 5.05 to go here in the next step therapy second quarter. 15-10 Carn City. Gremlins with the basketball. Sherwin back in the ball game. To Boer. <clears throat> Passes off here to Chase Bailey. First action for Boer in the night. Uh, Bailey hands it to Waltman. Waltman back to Boer on the left side. Boer fires that three-point shot. And it's good by Boer. 18-10. Gremlins. Znaski, his shot. It's off the mark. No good put back, though, by Smolin, though, is good. And it's 18-12. A nice look again for Carn City. My quality points coming off the bench. We have another foul here against Connemont. Looks like they're going to ring up Jackson Byer with this one. It is that. Uh, could be number three. And it is. Yeah, that's the downside of the physical style of play, and you almost have to do that against this squad, Mike. Kramer, beyond the arch, brings it back up, center top of the key, over to Boer. Boer, a couple dribbles, comes back to the top of the key area and passes off to Chase Bailey. Bailey. Comes right to the hoop between the defenders and open right up like the Red Sea. And it's a 20 to 12 here, Carn City. Nice job by Bailey now. With four points to the ball game with that shot. Poznanski 
Over to the right side to Shirley. Shirley at the free throw line to Smolin. Smolin driving between defenders. It's partially blocked. Coming down with its Boer. Boer will give it to the big guy, Waltman. Waltman will get the break started. Here's Waltman with the basketball. He likes to dribble. Lost the basketball out of bounds, and it goes back to Connemont Township. Boy, he did lose the ball there, but credit stumped. Stumped on a good job defensively, making him work a little hard. So Coach Bellis goes, get it to a guard. <laughs> They've got to be pleased. Connemont Township has to be pleased to limit Waltman to just the two points here. You're at the 3.30 mark, quarter number two. But it comes at a price. Obviously, Kramer has been open and had success. Stump driving down to the corner. Right in it goes, but stolen away by Roop. Roop kicks the ball ahead to Bailey. Here's Bailey. Chase Bailey puts up the shot. No good. Roop pulls down the rebound. Put back good by Roop. He's been all over the boards tonight. 22-12, Carn City up to their biggest lead of 10. Yeah, his first bucket in the ball game, but his contributions have been there on the defensive side, Mike. He is dominant on the boards. Znanski saved that from going out of bounds, too. Tried to dump it in, but the ball tipped back, and foul's going to be called here against Carn City. Nope. They're going to say... was waiting. We want to make sure. If it is, that would be seven. Foul's going to be rung up on uh, Poznanski. So that's going to send Roop to the line for the one and one. Roop, fresh off that bucket. He's got two points. Shots up and deep off the mark. Oh, Waltman with the rebound, put back good. How about that? 24-12, Carn City. You could hear the smack the thud out of Waltman's <laughs> hands. I still say we got to get you against him arm wrestling. Yeah, no contest. <laughs> yeah, no contest. I'm putting my money on Waltman. No offense, big guy. Well, that's, we're not talking anymore. <laughs> Take your headset off. <laughs> Kuznanski to small end and then into the paint. It goes to Shirley. Shirley to the right side. Stump on the back side. Poznanski, his put up is no good. Roop got him uh, to alter that shot. He gets the rebound back. He can't go <laughs> anywhere, and it's knocked out of bounds. It's blocked out of bounds again, and Carn City gets it. Mike, I had to chuckle. Did you see that yeah. block? Because Walman didn't even have to <laughs> leave. He just extended his arm and basically palmed the ball to knock it out. You don't see that too often. Yeah, Waltman right off of back off of uh, Poznanski. 2.14 to go here in the quarter. It's 24-12, Carn City. Ball up top. A little bit of patience here. Out of Bailey. Bailey controls left side to Sherwin. Into Waltman. Waltman. Back up top to Bailey. Chase Bailey with it. He fakes, drives between defenders, dumps it off to Roop, and an easy layup. Good pass from Bailey to Roop, 26-12. Mike, this is old school, getting everybody involved. I talk balance all the time. Luke Kramer with nine. Four points out of Waltman. Four out of Chase Bailey. Four out of Michael Roop. Three out of Eric Boer. Well, stolen by Bailey again. Here's Bailey going the other way. Bailey layup, good. And Carn City now in control by 16, 28-12. Full time on take a minute 29 to go here in the quarter. We'll take a time out. You're listening to Laurel Lai Clinic. State Playoff Basketball. Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. Homeowners and do-it-yourselfers, right now is a great time to redo your kitchen into a space you'll love. At Kale's Factory Direct Kitchens, we'll help you design and build a beautiful custom-built hardwood kitchen that will last. And you'll save money. How? At Kale's, there are never middleman markups. Hidden. Really started to get back to controlling those boards. And folks, i got to tell you, if you join us late, that may be deceptive in a sense. Carn City didn't really score until really almost about four minutes taken away. Uh, not quite the four full minutes, but just about four minutes taken away there at the opening quarter play. Now they're up by 16. Yep. Pretty impressive. The other big story in this from the foul trouble, Connemont Township has committed seven fouls already. Smolin comes up top here to Shirley. Now to the right corner to Poznanski. Dumps it down into Stump. Stump makes a move on the bottom block. Tried the reverse layup, but he's going to be fouled, and I think they're going to get Kramer on this one. That'll send Stump up at the line here to shoot two. For Stump, he's got two points in the ball game. As a team, Connemont Township, two of five from the free throw line. Shots nothing but net. That's money in the bank with that shot. Officials making sure everybody knows it's showtime on this one. 
Big shots up, and that's good. Nothing but net. Pressure put on here by Kahnema, but Sherman's going to get it across the timeline. Into the front court, here's the Bailey. Bailey. High stepping it there for a minute. Passes off to Waltman. Waltman into the lane. Around the defender. Shot good by Waltman. 30-14, Kern City. Minute to play. Let you know, too, if you're watching Dustin's clock, uh, he's running that manually. It's not tied into the regular system, so there may be a discrepancy there, but just pay attention to what I'm telling you. You'll know how much time's left. Ball down toward the baseline, and we're going to get a timeout taken by Carn City. It's just a quick 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here, 45 seconds to go. Gatesman's Heating, Plumbing, and Air Conditioning is our timeout sponsor. Give them a call, 782-3280, located in Shippenville. Mike, going back to that last bucket there by Waltman, number of the Connemaw fans who these guys, these people were very knowledgeable about basketball stopped. Ooh, they all went ooh on that move by Walton. They realized that in one hand it looked like it was going to be a travel because you see a big guy coming through like that. It was not a travel as he gets the shot to fall. We were concerned about Waltman too. When we came in, we saw the haircut and Bob goes, no! But so yeah, far he's... I'm one of these guys when you're winning like this, <laughs> don't change anything. But so far he is. Don't tell Tyler. Affected. Don't tell Tyler Oaks. He was loving that mullet. 40 seconds. Sherwin. Back to Bailey. It goes. 35 seconds. Karn City looks like they might play for the last shot here. We'll see. Bailey drives and Bailey's fouled and they're going to give him the basket. They're going to say continuation and Bailey will go to the line for the old-fashioned three-point play. Bailey up to eight points with that bucket. Officials making sure everybody is well aware. Just a single shot here. Shots up, and it's front of the rim, rolls in. Gremlins 33-14. Shirley spins it into Black. Black comes back up top. Uh, Poznanski with a long shot. It's off the mark, no good. A rebound by Bailey, 20 seconds. Bailey just gets the break started again. He trips himself up, and Smolin takes it back away. Here's Smolin going up against Waldman. Blocked by Waldman, and the ball still alive. It's saved by Shirley, but then taken away in the lane. Here comes Bailey the other way. Six seconds, five seconds, down to four seconds. The ball tipped away. Poznanski, Poznanski with one second, takes a long shot at the buzzer. It's no good, and we'll go to halftime with Carn City leading by a score of 33-14. to 14. All right, we'll take a break. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic uh, State Playoff Basketball powered by the Haskell House tonight, and it's all live here on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. One of the biggest risks to your future could be running out of money during a longer than expected retirement. Many people have not yet taken the time to determine if they will have enough assets to last throughout retirement. Our Retirement Income Evaluator can help you develop a roadmap and actual recommendations. To learn more, stop by our office located at 162 South 2nd Avenue in Clarion. Give us a call at 2223-9990 or visit JennyClarion.com. Jenny Montgomery Scott, LLC, member NYSE, FINRA, and SIPC. We want to say thanks. Thanks, of course, to our customers. After all, you're the reason we're here, and your support means everything to us. But as we all face the disruptions of this unprecedented time, we owe special appreciation to our community's first responders, medical professionals, and caregivers. In today's battle for the health of our families and neighbors, we're in your debt for your heroism, generosity, and caring. Thank you. Located at 511 Main Street in Shippenville, All-American Awards and Engraving is expanding to provide even better customer service with that personal small-town feel. Father, Jim Carroll, and son, Ian, are now the co-owners of the newly expanded 5,500-square-foot facility that is now open and ready for business. From embroidery to engraving to screen printing to personalized gifts, All American Awards and Engraving is ready to help you. Make your organization, business, school team, or event stand out with All American Awards and Engraving's quality promotional products. Visit their showroom for apparel, trophy, and awards ideas at 511 Main Street or visit their website at allamericanhq.com. Dubrook, a proud member of the M&B Group, is the right choice for your next concrete project. Specializing in decorative concrete products, precast concrete products, 
Gravel and stone delivery. Dubrook has what you need to complete your residential or commercial project. With locations in Clarion, Dubois, St. Mary's, Butler, and Evans City. Dubrook is ready to offer their professional help as your ready mix supplier. Call 1 844 Dubrook today. This is Corey. He made two big mistakes. His first mistake was not going to Laurel Eye Clinic to have bladeless LASIK. His second mistake was trying to pet what he thought was his cat without wearing his glasses. Don't be like Corey. Call Laurel Eye Clinic. Back here at Carn City High School, we're in the uh, first United National Bank halftime show. It is Carn City in control here so far, 33-14 over the Connemaw Township Indians. Mike Kalinowski, Governor Bob Dunkel, Dustin Kiefer all here tonight. Glad you could be with us. I know a lot of folks tuning in this evening. Do want to thank them for that. And also want to thank the Haskell House for being a special sponsor tonight to help make this game possible. And Bob, while we have the moment, why don't we take a look at the Red Bank Chevrolet stats. Well, for Connemaw Township, Mike, it was balanced, just not enough of it as Cameron Stump and Jackson Byer lead the way with four points each, three points out of Tyler Poznanski, two points out of Albert Smolin, and one out of Tanner Shirley, four of seven from the free throw line. There's a stat that really jumps out to me, partner, which is just five two-point field goals in the ballgame by Connemaw compared to 14 by Carn City. Of course, that really proves to be the difference in this one. But speaking of balance... Carn City's attack, very balanced. Chase Bailey leading the way with nine points. He and Luke Kramer each both with nine points. Six points out of Nathan Waltman. Four points out of Mike Root. Three out of Eric Boer. Again, that big stat I like to see is that 14 two-point field goals made by Carn City. They are, did connect, by the way, on one three-point shot in this one. They are two of three from the free-throw line tonight. All right, again, those Red Bank stats. I want to thank Red Bank Chevrolet located down there in New Bethlehem, right, right in Bob's backyard. So pretty easy to get down there and check out Red Bank Chevrolet. We'll take another time out. We'll come back. Governor's keys to the second half. Talk more about this one, too. And we'll let you know uh, who the winner of this one gets coming up on Saturday. It's all on the way. You're listening to the First United National Bank, the Fun Bank Halftime Show, part of Laurel Eye Clinic State Playoff Basketball Live on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. Sweet Basil Italian Restaurant and Bar in Shippenville offers daily specials for dine-in or takeout. Burger Sunday, Ravioli Monday, Lasagna Tuesday, Wings on Wednesday, Pasta Night Thursday, Fish Friday, and Prime Rib Saturday. In addition to the popular specials, there's a wide variety of pasta, pizzas, sandwiches, salads, appetizers, and homemade desserts. There's an option on the menu for every member of the family. Sweet Basil crafts their own bread, dough, sauces, and pies to give an authentic Italian cuisine and a one-of-a-kind experience. Sweet Basil, located off of Exit 60 of I-80 on Paint Boulevard, strives to invest in the local economy by supporting local farmers and using and promoting their products. To view their menu, visit Sweet Basil Italian Restaurant and Bar on Facebook. Call 814-226-7013 to place your takeout. Owners and operators, if your business depends on your truck, then we've got you covered. From simple oil changes to complete engine rebuilds, Bauer Truck Repair has the tools and the know-how to get the job done. We also offer 24-hour roadside assistance anywhere, anytime, any weather. Our techs are ready to get your truck fixed and back on the road. We even offer towing and load transfer services. At Bauer Truck Repair, we understand that every minute and every dollar counts. So trust your business with our business. Bauer Truck Repair, located off exit 60 in Chippenville. You can also find Find us online at BauerTruckRepair.com or call us at 814-226-6023. That's 
After all, you're the reason we're here, and your support means everything to us. But as we all face the disruptions of this unprecedented time, we owe special appreciation to our community's first responders, medical professionals, and caregivers. In today's battle for the health of our families and neighbors, we're in your debt for your heroism, generosity, and caring. Thank you. One of the biggest risks to your future could be running out of money during a longer than expected retirement. Many people have not yet taken the time to determine if they will have enough assets to last throughout retirement. Our Retirement Income Evaluator can help you develop a roadmap and actual recommendations. To learn more, stop by our office located at 162 South 2nd Avenue in Clarion. Give us a call at 222-3-9990 or visit JennyClarion.com. Jenny Montgomery Scott, LLC, member NYSE, FINRA, and SIPC. Homeowners and do-it-yourselfers, right now is a great time to redo your kitchen into a space you'll love. At Kale's Factory Direct Kitchens, we'll help you design and build a beautiful custom-built hardwood kitchen that will last, and you'll save money. How? At Kale's, there are never middleman markups, hidden charges, or sales commissions that could add 40%. Don't overpay for your kitchen cabinets at big box stores. Get them direct from Kale's Factory Direct. This is Corey. He made two big mistakes. His first mistake was not going to Laurel Eye Clinic to have bladeless LASIK. His second mistake was trying to pet what he thought was his cat without wearing his glasses. Don't be like Corey. Call Laurel Eye Clinic. You're listening to the EYT Media Network. All right, back at the Carn City High School. Going to wrap up that first United National Bank, the Fun Bank Halftime Show. Mike Kalinowski, Governor Bob Dunkel, Dustin Kiefer here. Carn City up 33-14. Bob Gatesman's auto body keys to the second half. For Carn City, I know what you're going to say, and I think I know what you're going to say for Connemont Township, but I'm not telling. Carn City, real easy. Keep your foot on the accelerator. Don't let up. You're up here by 19. Don't let up. Don't let them back in the game. Put this game away. If you can, try and get to the mercy rule to get that clock rolling. And, and hopefully, you know, you get out of here without uh, anybody getting injured or anything like that now. But you still can't look past you. got an entire second half. Now, for Connemont Township, you have to lock aim and fire. You've got to be aggressive. You've got to take chances defensively. You've got to shoot outside of your comfort zone. I realize Mike and looking at him, they're not very comfortable from that three-point area, but they're going to have to take some chances, some opportunities, try and chisel away. Need to whittle this uh, lead down to under 10 by the end of quarter number three. Now that's easier said than done. They do have a lot of work ahead of them. They're in a little bit of foul trouble. Got a couple of guys with multiple fouls out there. So uh, they still might have to let it fly because you only have two quarters left in your season and perhaps even your basketball career is over at the end of the, this ballgame. Well, that wraps up the Fun Bank Halftime Show. We go to quarter number three. It is a Penn State Dubois third quarter. Gremlins up here 33-14. They'll get the basketball as we start. You see Bailey with it. Dumps that into Waltman. Waltman kicks it up top to Kramer. Kramer to Sherwin as they work the ball to the top of the key. Back to Chase Bailey. Very patient here. Carn City. Ball to the corner. Bailey driving on the baseline. Dumps it off to Roop and then tosses it out of bounds. This is as soon as I said they're patient. Everything goes crazy. Well, that's that <laughs> announcer jinx we've talked so, so often about. And you can't be patient if you're Connemont Township. You've got to start and you know lock game and fire chisel away at that 19 points. is a big deficit in a playoff basketball game. Smolin comes up top here to Shirley. Shirley around the defense. Tried to dump it off. It's going to be tipped out of bounds by Waldman. Wanted to mention, too, at halftime, uh, the winner of this one gets uh, District uh, 7's uh, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart. That'll be on Saturday. So they'll get a bit of a break. Ball comes in. Stolen. By Kramer, but who's going to get it? Nope, it's Smolin getting it back. It was tipped by Kramer. Smolin hustles to get that one. Ball tipped by Roop. Wisdanski gets the ball back. Finds Stump at the free throw line. Stump driving into paint. Kicks it out to Shirley. Shot on the right side. No good. Uh, rebound is by uh, Beyer. Beyer shot. Good. And Beyer will go to the line for the old-time three-point play. Be a nice second opportunity there out of Beyer as he gets the shot to fall. Heads to the line now. He's going to ring that one up on Sherwin. That'll be his first of the ball game. That shot is in. Nothing but net. All of a sudden like that, Jackson Byer now with seven. 
Waltman passes off, and we're going to have pressure put on by Connemaw, but Waltman right through it. Waltman dumps it off to Roop. Roop has the ball. Nope, he's going to be fouled. Foul is going to be called on Stump. Connemaw wanted the walk, but they're going to say the foul first. Yeah, actually, if he catches that clean, he probably does walk, but because he didn't, lost contact, lost control really of the ball there. Was bailed out as well by that foul, but that's number three, by the way, on Stump for those of you scoring at home. That shot by Roop is good. So Byer and Stump both with three fouls, Governor. They're going to have to deal with that. Got to let them in. You know, you're down here big time points wise. You got to let them in. Season on the line. Shot does not go. It's missed. Good rebound by Byer under there. Poznanski in the lane. Puts up the shot. He doesn't go, but he's going to be fouled. And Poznanski will go to the line here to shoot a couple for the Indians. A couple of quick fouls here to start quarter number three. Bring this one up on Roop for Roop. That's just his first. Shots up and good. I was trying to think about this. Um, this season, we've done several Carn City games. Have we done a game yet where Gremlin has fouled out? Shots good. I don't know. I'd have to think about it. I don't think we have. <clears throat> Ball tossed down the court, but Poznanski's there to steal it away. Kramer trying to find Roop. Byer to stump to the left corner, driving on the baseline. The ball kicked back up top. top shot taken by Byer. It's good. How about that three-pointer? 34-22. The lead's down to 12. That's what you got to do. You got out of that comfort zone. You chiseled away now. For Carn City, got to find some answers here. Ball down to the baseline. Kramer with the drive. Dumps it off to Roop. Roop comes back up top to Bailey. Chase Bailey three-pointer. How about Bailey with the answer to that one? 34 37-22 the score in that three-pointer. Bailey now up to 12 points. Ball down to the corner. Swollen reins it in before that ball was pretty high. Now Byer with the shot. Left side or right side on the top of the key. He gets another three-pointer, and it's 37-25. Again, like the shot, like the look. Here's uh, Chase Bailey in the corner. Three-pointer from him on the way. That rattles the cage. Rolls around. It goes. We've been back and forth with Trey's, and it's 40-25, Carn City. Ball off, Smolin, and out of bounds. Goes back to the Gremlins. Checking in is Gehring. Gremlins have made three of them in the ballgame, Mike. Connemaw's made two. 15-point deficit right now. It's the Penn State Dubois third quarter. We're down to 5-23. Bailey and Waltman playing catch. Now they get it across the timeline to Gehring. Bailey now at the half court line. To Kramer. Coach Bell is barking out the offense. Make sure everybody's on the same page. Bailey in the lane. Out to Gehring. Gehring hands it back to Bailey. Bailey eyed the three. Didn't take it. Picks up his dribble. Closely guarded by Byer in the corner. Kicks it up top to Waltman. Here's Waltman. Back to Bailey, shot, and it goes. Bailey used all the rim, taught, went up into the air and down through, 43-25. That's two separate trips back to back. He gets that roll. Oh, nice pass right down in the paint to Stump and an easy layup for him, 43-27. Stump now six points to the ball game with that shot. Here's Bailey, double team. We're going to get a foul. They're going to say a bit of a push on Smolin. For Smolin, that should be his second. And it is. It's good if you're on the same page as what the official score is, Mike. Jay Bailey checks in for Roop here. Folks, there are, while Carn City will be losing some very talented seniors, there's a lot of talent returning for the squad next year. 4.23 to go. Ball to the right corner to Kramer. He'll drive on the baseline. It opened up. He's going to put it up strong. High over top of Stump. He gets the basket to go. 45-27. Kramer 11 points now. Trails only Chase Bailey. who leads all scorers. Again, Byer. That, that court is slick. Mark. It is. Byer to the left side. Comes back up top. Byer finds Shirley. Shirley at the free throw line. Back to Smolin. Mullen to stump at the left elbow. Right underneath, the ball's going to be tipped and then out of bounds as Byer can't hold on to it. 
So the turnover. The close defensive coverage out there forces that type of a pass because otherwise when you've got a ball hawk out there like Bailey, he's going to pick it off. Tate Bailey will work it across the timeline, top of the key, over to Chase on the left side. Waldman at the free throw line underneath the Gehring, dumps it out to the corner to Kramer. Kramer takes the saw just inside the arch, gets that to go. And it's a 20-point lead for the Gremlins. 13 now out of Luke Kramer. Byer sends it over to Shirley. Up top to Poznanski. Then a long shot right side. Byer, it's off the side of the rim. Rebound pulled down by Waltman. Here's Waltman. He'll get the break started. Waltman leans in there, but uh, Poznanski is going to get called with a foul. Just a second. 20-point deficit here. Carn City looking to extend that lead. Kramer in the corner. To Bailey into Waltman. Look at that triple coverage. Yeah, now it knocked away, and it's stolen away. Here comes Byer. Byer down the left side of the lane. Layup good by Byer. Good drive. 47-29. Here comes Bailey back the other way. Bailey into the lane. Bailey around defenders. Puts up the shot. No good. Rebound pulled down by Stump. Stump kicks it ahead to Poznanski. Poznanski stops, pops, three-pointer on the way. That's no good. Rebound fought away by Gary. And the foul's going to be called on Stump. Stump came back in and grabbed a hold of Gehring, and that's going to be number four on him. Well, Gehring, it was a great pickpocket move on his part. <laughs> He'd make a living in New York City, wouldn't he? I'll tell you what, I'd be afraid. <laughs> afraid of these guys. Two and a half to go. Penn State Dubois, third quarter. Glad you could be with us tonight on the EYT Media Network. Whenever this win our, gets Our Lady of the Sacred Heart coming up on Saturday. Right now, Carn City up 47-29. Tate Bailey works it to the left corner. To Waltman at the left elbow. Waltman takes a dribble, drives in, and the charge is going to be called on Waltman. He knew it, turned around, headed back down the court. Yeah, bang, bang, and you can see the other side. Kramer was saying, you know, I was open. <laughs> And I think he was, but the high percentage shot was with Waltman there. Waltman's going to catch a little bit of a break here. It's, it's just his first foul. There's you scoring at home. 213 remains here, quarter number three. It's a 47 to 29 Gremlin lead. After a slow start, they really have led the rest of the way, Michael. Here's Beyer with it, looks to the right side, gets it into Black. Black wide open underneath. That was Beyer. He found him. And an easy layup for Bayer, 47-31. A little miscommunication on the defensive responsibilities out there with the exit of Waltman. Root picks up his dribble, picked up quickly there by Black. Chase Bailey, boy, he was right on that line, very close. Bailey, right side to Tate, back up top to Chase. Chase will back off near the center circle. Minute 36 to go here in the quarter, 47-31, Carn City. Bailey left side, top of the key. Passes off to Kramer. Hands it to Tate Bailey. Bailey spins around. Out of chase, minute 19. Clock continues to move. Chase Bailey at the free throw line, out to Kramer. Kramer fakes. Round the defense, shot on the baseline. It's off the mark, no good. And then over the back, it's going to be called on Gehring. Fourth foul rung up here against Carn City. Gehring, nice effort, but just a little too much contact with that one. It'll be a second. 109 remains here, quarter number three. Great to have you with us, 47-31. Slowly working it across the timeline is uh, Byer. Byer's going to take the deep three-point shot. That's no good. Followed it, but Bailey was there. Bailey spinning around, dumps that ahead to Gehring. Gehring's going to come back to Bailey. 50 seconds. Tate Bailey now at the center circle. Right side into the lane, behind the back dribble. Spins around, nowhere to go. Comes back up top to Boer. Boer will take the three-point shot. It's good by Boer, and it's 50-31, Carn City. Nothing but net, partner. Six points, that is his second in the ball game. 19-point lead for the Gremlins. Looking to punch their ticket to the next round. The ball blocked there, but it comes back out into the hands of Gregory. Poznanski in the paint, spinning. Has the ball knocked away by Roop. Gets it back again. 
And he's going to walk. You can hear a number of folks yelling travel. And they've got the call. The official says, hey, give me the ball. I'm going to send it in play here. 12.2 ticks remain. Have that 19-point lead once again to the Scrimlin squad. Long Nine to seconds. get a shot off at about the time as it expires. Tate Bailey works it. He'll take a long shot. It's off the mark. No good. Rebound is by Fiznanski, but that'll end the third quarter. 50-31, Carn City in control. We go to quarter number four. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic. State playoff action powered by the Haskell House and Explore Clarion D9Sports.com. <laughs> is Corey. He made two big mistakes. His first mistake was not going to Laurel Eye Clinic to have bladeless LASIK. His second mistake was trying to pet what he thought was his cat without wearing his glasses. Don't be like Corey. Call Laurel Eye Clinic. Here we go to quarter number four. Kern City up 50-31. The Indians will get the ball to start this fourth quarter. It is a Dubrook fourth. Byer will work it across the timeline here for the Indians. We're going to have the lock aim and fire here in this one. Alex Gregory with the basketball here at Connemont Township. Yeah, right now your season's on the line. and you know Some of the seniors out there, it's their career on the line. It's going to come to an end here. Seven minutes, 42 seconds. Ball dumped into the paint, and the basket not good there, but going up to the line to shoot here will be Poznanski. Going to be fouled by Roop. Poznanski came in averaging 21.6 a game. He currently sits here at five. Shots up and off the mark. Really, Connemon not had many good looks at the hoop. Next shot is good. That's money in the bank. Six points now for Poznanski. Seven and a half to go here in the final stanza. Bailey will work it across the timeline here for the Gremlins. Dumps it to Waltman at the right elbow. Back to Bailey. Bailey fake steps back. Wide open three-point shot on the way. It's good, and you cannot leave him alone. It's 53-32. So fundamentally sound. Did you see? He wanted to make sure the footing was correct. 21-point lead for the Gremlins. Dubrook fourth quarter here on the EYT Media Network. Buyer with it at the right side, top of the key. Goes into the paint to Poznanski. The ball loose. Waltman comes out with it. Kicks it ahead to Bailey. Here's Bailey. Dumps it to Roop. Roop puts it up. And an easy layup for Roop. And it's 55-32, Carn City. I think the crowd secretly was hoping for a jam, Mike. <laughs> you were, too. Oh, no question. But I also know, and Roop knows, if he didn't get that jam, he'd have been sitting on the bench. So. Gregory shots off the mark. Rebound Tate Bailey. Bailey is going to be fouled. There was a hold. Foul's going to be called Should be Ethan on Black. Black. That'll be his second. And, and again, you have to take those chances out there if you're Connemaw Township. you got to start and roll the dice at this point. Ball right side. That's Sherwin. Three-pointer on the way. Sherwin, that's no good. Fight for the ball. Kramer, oh, everywhere. No. Waltman, nope, here comes the, here come the Indians. Poznanski down the right side, puts up the shot. It's no good. The ball comes out, tipped out of bounds. It will stay. Caught him on Township basketball. Game really getting physical here in quarter number three. Looked like bowling for players at one point. <laughs> ball kicked out to Shirley to the right side. Poznanski around the defense, driving to the hoop. Blocked from behind by Roop, and here comes Bailey with it. Bailey with the basketball. Bailey stops, pops, three-pointer, and it's good by Bailey, 58-32, Gremlins. That guy is just money in the bank. Byler, uh, that's Byer with it. To Stump at the free throw line, Stump shot good, 15-footer from Stump, 58-34. Clock down to 5.50 to go here in this Dubrook fourth. Waltman. 
Going to kick it to the right side. Kramer, three-point shot. That's no good. The ball comes out. Rebound by Shirley. Here's Shirley. Now on the right side of the lane. Into the lane, and the uh, charge is going to be called on Shirley. First foul for him. They're talking. Going to get this scoreboard right. Nothing wrong. Got to just get the stoppage in place. Sometimes technology is great. <laughs> Occasionally there's a little hiccup. There we go. 58-34 the score. Garden City with the lead. Five and a half to go. Waltman across the timeline. Shaking and baking down the left side of the lane. Kicks it to Roop. Roop. Roop in the paint, has it knocked away, fight for the basketball, he'll rip it back, comes up top, Bailey, fake step back, three-pointer on the way, off the front of the rim, no good, and Kramer's going to save it, saves it back, who to? It's uh, Beyer, Beyer, right down the middle of the lane, and we're going to get Roop with the foul, Roop comes in strong to try to block that one, but he'll get the foul instead, and Beyer up to the line to shoot two. Yeah, I like the hustle there, Roop was not going to allow him to have the easy two. So that's the difference, he'd have probably been dogging it back there. Not yeah, that easy I would have pushed him, I would have pushed him. <laughs> Then complain. Now more like you to grab the shirt. That will slow him down a little bit. <laughs> Shot is up and good. So Bayer makes his first shot. 5-12 on a clock here. It's a 58-35 ball game. The next shot off the mark with Waltman with the rebound. Waltman to Bailey. Bailey will work the basketball. Waltman to the left side to Kramer. Kramer hands it to Root, back to Kramer. Kramer into the lane, to the right side to Sherwin. Sherwin faked a couple of times, but Kramer says, I'll take the shot. How about that? He'll drain the three-pointer. 61-35, Carn City. When you're on, you're on. 16 in the ballgame now out of Luke Kramer. Zdansky with the three-point shot. He'll nail the three-pointer on the other end here for the Indians. 61-38. 4-34. Waltman. Going to have that ball tipped out of bounds. It stays Carn City ball. Carn City up here by 23. Waltman on the bottom block. Fakes, spins. Has the ball knocked away. Here comes Black with it. Black one-on-one -on, -one on Bailey. He'll stop and pop that shot. It's off the mark. Put back, though, by Stump. That's no good. And Poznanski will get the basket. He'll be fouled, and he'll go up to the line for that three-point play. And Poznanski's been in that position before, knew enough to put the brakes on. He's got 11 following that bucket, wants to make it 12. Shots up, in and good, nothing but net. Give him 12. Remember, he came in averaging 21.6 a game. Carn City's lead is back to 20 with 4.14 to go. Here's Sherwin, back to Bailey. Bailey will back off near the circle. To the right side here to Kramer. Kramer. Up top to Bailey. Dumps it down to Roop in the corner. Now to Kramer and back up top to Bailey. They're working the ball here. 3.54 to go here in the ball game. Yeah, great opportunity to work on the stall game a little bit. Roop. Hands it to Waltman and then tried to dump it into the paint to Bailey, but uh, the ball too strong and Piznanski will come out with it. Here's Piznanski. Left side to Shirley. Shirley driving on the baseline. What a rejection by Roop. Save by Kramer, but right to Byerly. And Byer, uh, Byer's shot is no good. Ball loose in the paint. That's picked up. Shirley's shot is no good, but he'll be fouled. They're going to get Roop there, and up to the line goes Shirley to shoot a couple here for the Indians. Roop not a fan of the call, but made just a little too much contact. The official was right on top of it. For Roop, that is number four. Shirley shots up, in and good. Two points for Shirley in the ballgame. This might be an interesting thing to let Roop out there with the four foul, see how he reacts to the remainder of the ballgame. In and out, no good. Waltman with the rebound. Bailey pushes it up the court. 320 remaining here in this one. 61-42, Gremlins up by 19. Waltman, right elbow, back out to Bailey, and they're going to be content here as they work the ball back out. 
Bailey, left side, top of the key. Into Waldman. The ball tipped away by Stump and knocked out of bounds. It'll stay Carn City basketball. Again, this is an opportunity. This is a, you know, at this point, game well out of hand, but it's an opportunity for some live practice in that stall. Ball in the Waltman. Waltman lost it out of bounds. And uh, Conowa Township gets it back. 2.53 to go. 19-point lead here for the Gremlins in this Dubrook fourth quarter. Mind you, two coming up Friday will be at Clarion High School as uh, Clarion moves on in those single-A state playoffs. Well, that one for you. And then we'll talk about Saturday with these Gremlins. Here's a drive to the hoop. It's Foul's going to be called. I think they're going to get Bailey on this one. And looks like a buyer will be up at the line to shoot a couple. Buyer in the ballgame has 18. Mega 19, that shot's good. Buyer came in averaging 14.5 a game. So looking good tonight is Jackson Buyer. Next shot, good. Money in the bank with that shot. Pressure put on here with 243. Sherwin trying to go somewhere. The ball tipped back into the hands. Poznanski has it blocked, and then the ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay Conamon Township basketball. It's a 17-point lead for the Gremlins. Conamon making some noise here with 235 to go. Focus it right off the back of Waldman. It's tipped. Black dumps it underneath. Poznanski shot no good. And Waltman's going to rip it away. Bailey with the basketball. Black on him defensively. Passes off to Roop. Roop back to Bailey. Bailey with it on the right side. Here's Bailey down the right side of the lane. Puts that shot up. It's good by Bailey. 63-44 with 2.10 to go. You can see Connemaw ready to do mass substitution. I want to thank their starters, and Coach Bell is going to do the same. Said it's going to be like a hockey and a line change here. <laughs> Meyer tosses it into the paint. Black has it, dumps it in. Meyer has it rejected by Kramer. Waldman kicks it ahead to Bailey. Here's Bailey with it down the right side. Bailey over to Roop. Roop puts that shot up strong. It's good, and Roop to the line for the old-time three-point play. You know, Mike, I love the idea that Roop was allowed to stay in the ballgame with the four fouls. Look, even if he would foul out, it wouldn't have been a problem, but it was great because you gave him the opportunity to play and having four on your shoulders, so to speak. Yep. Now, people forget he's a young guy, um, so he's going to be in these situations yep. multiple times throughout his career. Big expectations for his future. Yeah, he's just a sophomore. You know, we saw him last year be impactful. Shots up and good. Gehring will check in for Roop. That'll complete the line change here for Carn City. So bear with us. We've got a lot of new numbers in here. Fast and furious. This final minute 42. Zapka over to the right side to uh, Brenneman. And up top it goes. That's. Dietz on the right side with the basketball. Comes up top again to Osborne. Osborne drives down the left side of the lane. Puts up the shot. It's off the mark. Rebound by Gehring. Gehring to Tate Bailey. Minute 19. Bailey left side. Back up to Bailey it goes. Down to the corner. That's a Grossman. Dumped it into the paint. Ball kicked back out to Boer. Boer to Tate Bailey. A minute six to go here in the ball game. Tate Bailey into the lane, puts up the runner. It's off the front of the rim, no good. The rebound put back, though, is good. And with the basket here for the Gremlins, that'll be Jacob Callahan, and he'll get the basket and up to the line to complete the three-point play. And Callahan staying with that one all the way in some heavy contact. As he is at the line, bends the knees, releases, shot up. Rattles the cage and falls. It falls. Quickly, here comes Connemon Township. Ball on the baseline. Shot is off the mark, but the putback, though, is good by Connor Osborne. Shonko had the shot, but Osborne with the putback. Makes it 69-46. Long three-pointer on the right side. That's good. How about Braden Grossman with that three-pointer? Uh, three 72-46, Carn City. It's talking about seconds. making the most of your opportunity in a state playoff game. Zapka down to the baseline. 
And a foul's going to be called. Good drive to the hoop by Michael Shonko, a sophomore. He'll go up to the line here. Foul's going to be called. So 72 to 46, your score here. Just under 23 ticks remain. That shot is short. Been a fun one tonight, partner. It's a lot of offense out of this gremlin squad. Shot missed again. Osborne with the rebound, though, but he they're going to call the jump ball. And land pro possession arrow points in direction of Carn City. You know, we didn't talk about this at all during the course of the pregame. And, well, that means you and I didn't do a good job. But, you know, you got to wonder. <laughs> you know, we didn't know quite what to expect for sure. This Carn City offensive attack has had a tough ball game on Saturday. And they've... Asked and answered, so to speak, as they've scored 72 here, Mike. Certainly have. Here's a runner to the hoop. It's off the mark. Three seconds, two seconds. And we'll get the jump ball. This time it goes to Connemont Township. Two seconds. Yeah, you wonder sometimes that ball game became pretty physical. It's a hard-fought victory. Uh, you know, one certainly in which uh, they really earned it uh, coming back from nine at halftime. Shot at the buzzer. Off the back of the rim. It was close. 72-46. Carn City a winner. They move on to take on Our Lady of the Sacred Heart coming up on Saturday. We'll talk more about that on the postgame show. Let's just take a very quick time out. We'll be back with more for you after this. You're listening to Laurel Eye Clinic State Playoff Basketball powered by the Haskell House tonight on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. Owners and operators, if your business depends on your truck, then we've got you covered. From simple oil changes to complete engine rebuilds, Bauer Truck Repair has the tools and the know-how to get the job done. We also offer 24-hour roadside assistance anywhere, anytime, any weather. Our techs are ready to get your truck fixed and back on the road. We even offer towing and load transfer services. At Bauer Truck Repair, we understand that every minute and every dollar counts. So trust your business with our business. Bauer Truck Repair, located off Exit 60 in Chippenville. You can also find Find us online at BauerTruckRepair.com or call us at 814-226-6023. That's 814-226-6023. This is the EYT Media Network. Right back here at Carn City High School. Final score again. It is Carn City 72, Connemaw Township 46. The Gremlins moving on in the AA State Playoffs as they... We'll play on Saturday, but we are in the Clarion County Community Bank postgame show. And we'll take a quick look at those Red Bank Chevrolet stats. The governor has them all statted up and ready to go. Well, leading the way for Connemaw Township, it was Jackson Byer checking in with 20 points, followed by 12 points of Tyler Posnanski, 8 points out of Cameron Stump, 2 points each out of Albert Smolin, Tanner Shirley, and Connor Osborne. As a team, 13 of 21 from the free throw line. Did make three pointer, three three pointers in this ball game, Michael. As we lead, uh, as we take a look here at Carn City's leaders, there was a host of guys getting involved in this one. Chase Bailey, 26 points for Chase, 16 points for Luke Kramer, 10 points for Micah Root, six points each for Nathan Waltman and Eric Boer, three points out of Jacob Callahan and Braden Grossman, and two points out of Luke Gehring. Five of seven from the free throw line for Carn City. They did make, how about this, nine three-pointers. You know, a couple of stats really jump out at you, nine three-pointers and then 22-point field goals. So um, when you take a look, of course, the two-point field goals converted by Connemont, just 12. Uh, that's part of your big difference there, partner. Again, the stats again brought to you by Red Bank Chevrolet. Time to take a look at our Hager paving player of the ball game. And, uh, Bob, you got the stats in front of you. I got a few ideas myself. We thumb wrestled, but I think you won. And who is it? It is Chase Bailey. Chase Bailey is your Hager paving player of the ball game. Chase with 26 points. Mike, he did it just about everywhere on the court, whether it was from three-point land, whether it was shooting twos, whether it was out there on the defensive side. Chase Bailey is your Hager paving player of the ball game. So there you go, Hager Paving Player of the Game, Chase Bailey, and uh, that'll wrap up the Clarion County Community Bank postgame show. Reminder, Friday night we'll be over at Clarion High School today, single-A state playoffs. Get rolling for us with the Clarion boys, and then on Saturday we'll let you know what's up. We're not sure what's uh, happening on Saturday, but these Carn City Gremlins will take on Our Lady of the Sacred Heart on Saturday. We'll let you know you want to stay tuned. Explore Clarion D9Sports.com. Your news, information, and sports leaders will keep you updated on where we're going to be and what's going on. I want to thank our producer, Dustin Kiefer, for my broadcast partner, Mike Kalinowski. This is Governor Bob Dunkel saying, hey, 
Let's be careful out there.